Thank you. Very Donald, much. congratulations. Thank you. And uh, looking forward to having a, like we said, a smooth transition. Do everything we can to make sure you're accommodated, what you need. And we're going to get a chance to talk about some of that today. So Good. Welcome. Welcome Thank back. You. And, uh, thank you very much. And uh, politics is tough. And it's, uh, in many cases, not a very nice world. But it is a nice world today. And I appreciate it very much. And a transition that's so smooth, it'll be as smooth as it can get. And uh, I very much appreciate that, Jim. You're welcome. We begin today with that historic moment at the White House this morning. President Biden making good on his promise of a peaceful transfer of power, welcoming President-elect Trump. Jessica Moore joins us now with the latest on that and how the Trump cabinet is shaping up. Jess? Well, Cindy, lots happening today. Today's meeting is happening four years after then-President Trump declined to extend the same invitation to incoming President Biden. Trump saying this morning, politics is tough, but the transition will be smooth. Congratulations. Thank you. Cameras captured the moment President Biden welcomed President-elect Trump back to the Oval Office as the two men shared a rare moment of unity. Looking forward to having a, like we said, a smooth transition. Do everything we can to make sure you're accommodated, what you need. And we're going to get a chance to talk about some of that today. So Good. Welcome. Welcome thank you. Back. Very much. And, uh, thank you very much. And uh, politics is tough. And it's... Uh, in many cases, not a very nice world, but it is a nice world today, and I appreciate it very much. Following a disappointing loss for the Democratic Party, President Biden has been intentional in his efforts to endorse the sanctity of the election and acknowledge Trump's victory, capped off by keeping the time-honored tradition of hosting the president-elect in the Oval Office. Earlier this morning, Trump met with House Republicans ahead of a Senate vote to replace Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. I just want to thank everybody. You've been incredible. We worked with a lot of you to get you in. And you helped me, and you helped me too. Trump continues to fill positions for his incoming administration, announcing Mike Huckabee as U.S. ambassador to Israel and Fox News anchor and Army veteran Pete Hegseth as Secretary of Defense. Pete Hegseth obviously uh, has a decorated uh, military career. Uh, and I think he will uh, will be a strong choice. He does not seem to have much of a detailed background in DOD policy. The lack of experience is concerning. The new Republican Senate will have to confirm all Trump cabinet-level picks in the coming weeks. It is worth noting Melania Trump declined an invitation from First Lady Jill Biden for the traditional tea that usually happens while the president and president-elect are meeting. Melania Trump's camp said she has a scheduling conflict related to her new memoir and would not accompany her husband to the White House. How unusual is it for, uh, you know, upcoming first lady right. to, to decline? Very unusual, yeah. to put it mildly. It's unconventional, I would say, <clears throat> excuse me, not unexpected, though. Melania Trump has been really clear. She doesn't even know how much of a full-time first lady she plans to be during the second term. So I wouldn't say people were shocked, but it, it was sort of breaking with that decorum and tradition. Yes, that scene was cordial. The brief pleasantries were pleasant, I guess, polite. <laughs> but I do think it is worth underscoring. You know, the reason that this scene and this image is so striking is because these two men have no relationship to speak of. This is not uh, President George W. Bush welcoming the Obamas to the White House. This is not Bill Clinton uh, welcoming W. Bush to the White House. You uh, look back on those images and the footage and there is some real warmth there. Uh, there is no actual warmth, despite the fire, uh, between mm -hmm. those two men. Uh, We've talked about the many ways in which uh, President Trump has uh, talked in denigrating ways about President Biden. Biden, too, throughout the course of this campaign, uh, referring to this person as a fascist, as a total threat uh, to the country. And now, on top of that, he is having to say the words, welcome back, to a man who single-handedly actually could completely alter and probably already has uh, altered his uh, political life. Legacy. The fact that uh, he believed that he needed to seek a second term uh, and then was forced out of the race and then the vice president that he endorsed didn't end up winning. I mean, that is going to be sort of the lead sentence probably of anything that is ever written uh, about President Biden. And here they are now just sitting a couple of feet away from each other and he is having to say the words welcome back. 
President-elect Donald Trump visited the White House today for the first time since leaving office. During a sit-down with President Joe Biden, Biden emphasized that there will be a smooth transition of power. Meetings like this between the president and the president-elect are a longtime tradition, one that Trump skipped in 2020 when Biden won. President Joe Biden and President-elect Donald Trump meeting in the Oval Office Wednesday. Looking forward to having, a, like we said, a smooth transition. It's their first sit-down since Trump secured a second term. Politics is tough, and it's, uh, in many cases, not a very nice world, but it is a nice world today, and I appreciate very much it, a transition that's so smooth it'll be as smooth as it can get. It's a tradition for the outgoing president to host the incoming commander in chief after the election. But Trump did not host Biden in 2020 as he fought the election results based on falsehoods about voter fraud. He also chose to skip Biden's inauguration. Following a disappointing loss for the Democratic Party, Biden has been intentional in his efforts to endorse the sanctity of the election and acknowledge Trump's victory. Campaigns are contests of competing visions. The country chooses one or the other. We accept the choice the country made. This meeting comes as Biden works to secure his legacy and Trump prepares to take office, tapping loyalists for key positions that offer a glimpse into how certain policies may be implemented. According to people familiar with Trump's plans, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem will be asked to lead the Department of Homeland Security, and sources say Florida Senator Marco Rubio is his top choice for Secretary of State. Melania Trump was also invited to visit the White House today, but did not attend. According to a White House official, First Lady Jill Biden gave a handwritten letter to the president-elect for the incoming First Lady, in which she expressed her congratulations and her team's readiness to help with the transition. Reporting at the White House, I'm Julia Benbrook.